morning for our prayer service, we will recite the Psalms, and I'll ask that this would be so side one, one, and side two, two. Okay, and I'll say both sides with you so that we keep uh, a good uh, pace going. Please stand. <clears throat> o Lord, open my lips. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Again, he left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. 
He took him off by himself, away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, and spitting, touched the tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephrata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished and they said, he has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. And please be seated for a moment. This morning at our morning prayer, we're going to give those who will be brought into the church this evening, those brought in by baptism and those brought in by uh, fullness reception, full reception into the church. We're going to give them the creed this morning, and they are going to pray that creed. And as they pray that creed, I ask you to listen very attentively, because often we say it, but we don't hear it. So as they pray that creed today, Let's listen and let those words fill our hearts today. They, the newest of the church, are going to teach us and pray for us this morning. Let the elect now come forward to receive the creed from the church. Have you stand on the, over there, please? And if you could just face me. Receive the creed of our church. Kimberly, Colleen, and Sean. Pray carefully the words of that faith by which you will be justified. The words are few, but the mysteries they contain are great. Receive them with a sincere heart and be faithful to them. And so, I believe in one God. We forgot to tell you that there's some big words in there. Sisters and brothers, let us pray for Kimberly, Colleen, and Sean. That God in his mercy may make them responsive to his love so that through the waters of rebirth they may receive pardon for their sins and have life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, 
eternal source of light, justice, and truth, take under your tender care your servants, Kimberly, Colleen, and Sean. Purify them and make them holy. Give them true knowledge, sure hope, and sound understanding, and make them worthy to receive the grace of your love. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sisters and brother, although you cannot participate fully in the Eucharist at this point, we ask that you look forward to this evening, just a few hours away, and you will be welcomed, as all of us are, to the table of the Lord to receive fully the gift of life. We are praying for you, we love you dearly, and we are anxious for this evening. So congratulations. And please take your seat. From the jaws of hell, Lord, rescue my soul. Once I said, in the noontime of life, I must depart. To the gates of the netherworld, I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. Day and night you give me over to torment. I cry out until the dawn. Like a lion he breaks all my bones. Day and night you give me over to torment. Like a swallow I utter shill cries. I moan like a dove. My eyes grow weak, gazing heavenward. O Lord, I am in straits. Be my surety. You have preserved my life from the pit of destruction when you cast behind your back all my sins. For it is not the netherworld that gives you thanks, nor death that praises you. Neither do those who go down into the pit await your kindness. The living, the living give you thanks, as I do today. Fathers declare to their sons, O oh God, your faithfulness. The Lord is our Savior. We shall sing to stringed instruments in the house of the Lord all the days of our life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. From the jaws of hell, Lord, Rescue my soul. I was dead, but now I live forever. Praise God in his holy place. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his powerful deeds. Praise his surpassing greatness. Oh, praise him with sound of trumpet. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Oh, praise him with resounding gongs. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that lives and that breathes give praise to the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I was dead, but now I live forever.
Something strange is happening. There is a great silence on earth today, a great silence and stillness. The whole earth keeps silence because the king is asleep. The earth trembled and is still because God has fallen asleep in the flesh and he has raised up all who have slept ever since the world began. God has died in the flesh and hell trembles with fear. He has gone to search for our first parent as for a lost sheep, greatly desiring to visit those who live in darkness and in the shadow of death. He has gone to free from sorrow the captives, Adam and Eve, he who is both God and the Son of Eve. The Lord approached them bearing the cross, the weapon that had won him the victory. At the sight of him, Adam, the first man he had created, struck his breast in terror and cried out to everyone, My Lord be with you all. Christ answered him, and with your spirit. He took him by the hand and raised him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I am your God, who for your sake have become your son. Out of love for you and for your descendants, I now, by my own authority, command all who are held in bondage to come forth, all who are in darkness to be enlightened, all who are sleeping to arise. I order you, O sleeper, to awake. I did not create you to be held a prisoner in hell. Rise from the dead, for I am the life of the dead. Rise up, work of my hands, you who were created in my image. Rise, let us leave this place, for you are in me and I am in you. Together we form only one person, and we cannot be separated. For your sake I, your God, became your son. I, the Lord, took the form of a slave. I, whose home is above the heavens, descended to the earth and beneath the earth. For your sake, for the sake of man, I became like a man without help, free among the dead. For the sake of you, who left a garden, I was betrayed to the Jews in a garden, and I was crucified in a garden. See on my face the spittle I received in order to restore to you the life I once breathed into you. See there are the marks of the blows I received in order to refashion your warped nature, nature in my image. On my back, see the marks of the scourging I endured to remove the burden of sin that weighs upon your back. See my hands, nailed firmly to a tree, for you who once wickedly stretched out your hand to a tree. I slept on the cross, and a sword pierced my side for you, who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side has healed the pain in yours. My sleep will arouse you from your sleep in hell. The sword that pierced me hath sheathed the sword that was turned against you. Rise, let us leave this place. The enemy led you out of the earthly paradise. I will not restore you to the paradise, but I will enthrone you in heaven. I forbade you the tree that was only a symbol of life. But see, I who am life itself am now one with you. I appointed cherubim to guard you as slaves are guarded. But now I make them worship you as God. The throne formed by cherubim awaits you, its bearers swift and eager. The bridal chamber is adorned, the banquet is ready, the eternal dwelling places are prepared. 
the treasure houses of all good things lie open. The kingdom of heaven has been prepared for you from all eternity. stand for our Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. 
In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Our response to our universal prayer is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, our Bishop Edward, and for all the bishops and leaders of the church, that they may guide us as sleepers into the way of peace, we pray to the Lord. For all those in positions of government, that they may be men and women of peace and justice and a love of all life, we pray to the Lord. That the church might be blessed with more vocations to priesthood, religious life, and lay ministry, we pray to the Lord. For the sick and for the many people who've asked for our prayers, and we pray especially for those who suffer from COVID-19. We pray to the Lord. For all our first responders, for all our military personnel, and for all those who care for us, love us, and protect us, we pray to the Lord. And we take a moment now to add our own intentions, remembering especially those we, who will be baptized and brought into full communion this evening. For all these intentions, we pray to the Lord. And as we come to the conclusion of our morning prayer, we pray. A powerful and ever living God, your only son went down among the dead and rose again in glory. In your goodness, raise up your faithful people buried with him in baptism be one with him in the eternal life of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And we ask those who will be brought, baptized this evening and brought into full communion to come forward, please. And we ask that the three of you would lead us to the front of the church where the new fire awaits us. Where we will look forward to blessing this fire, this light of the world, uh, this evening at our service. So we go in peace.
snowy this morning, isn't it? <laughs> no snow. <laughs> <laughs> Very good job, I have to say. <laughs> so this fire is going to burn all day, and there'll be somebody here uh, guarding the fire all day and praying for it. 